Welcome back to the second part in this series where I'm going to try to build a content feed. In this one I want to get the Django REST framework uh, set up, so I'm going to try to get it initially installed and uh, perhaps even rendering some sort of a response. Uh, just a simple one just to test that it's all working and set up correctly. So the first thing I need to do is I need to pip install Django REST framework, because I don't think we've got that installed yet. And that should go and grab the latest version, so 3.6.4. And let's go and add that to the settings. So I'll use Atom here to edit the settings file. Now this is a, a settings file that's created by default. So there's a lot of stuff here that I don't, I don't really want. Uh, I could probably take out a lot of the comments and things. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave it in, uh, just because we have better things to do at the moment, just to get the project working. And I'm going to say rest framework. So we need to install it as an app, as a Django app. And I think we should also, I think that should be okay for now. We might add something like uh, default pagination in the API um, later on. Uh, we could do that in settings as well. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as that, I think. I'm gonna create a new Django app to, to put the API in as well. So this content feed, this is like the main project app if you like, it's where our settings are kept, it's probably where we'll keep our requirements and things like that in the future. Uh, but I don't, I, I sort of want the API code separate from that. So a nice way to do that is to do Django admin start app. So it's going to start a specific Django app, which should appear as another folder. And I'm going to call that folder content API. So in other words, where all the API code will live. So it can't do that because it says uh, framework, I've got a typo there. Uh, so it should be REST framework, I think, and if I try to start up again, so that's worked now, so if we go back to Atom, you should see now we have another folder. And I've just realized uh, I don't think we have it in a Git repository yet, so I'm going to do git init and git status. So we have an initial repository, I'm just going to commit that quickly so we can uh, have something to sort of, something that's concrete and we know it works. And uh, so I'm going to do git commit dash m uh, start a project. Okay, so that's committed now. And what we should be able to do is in this new content API app, uh, we should be able to uh, start building the API. So let's go back here. And at the moment, so the server's not running, so I'm just gonna run the server again. So everything's still working correctly. Now that that's working successfully, I want to get the uh, view set up next. So I need to define a view in the content API. And so for this, it's going to be a new class. And I'm just going to call it uh, test view set. So I'm going to explain what a view set is in a minute, but it's going to inherit from uh, view sets dot view set. At the moment, it's just going to, uh, I'm going to define a method there in a second, but first I'm just going to import from uh, the things we need. So I need to do rest framework import view sets. And I'm also going to do from rest framework dot response import a thing called response. So you'll see me use response in a second. So I'm, I'm on this class, I'm going to define a method which is going to represent a single view where you can think of a view set as a collection of views. So here I'm going to say def list and the name is important. The name is a part of the Django REST framework so it's going to use that to identify uh, that method as the method that dictates what it should display in the list view. So in this one it's going to say self and request, so it's going to be passed to request object. And for this one I'm going to keep it very simple for now, I'm just going to say return response, which is a REST framework thing which we just imported, and I'm just going to return a string and I'm going to say success. So that if we, if we get that message we know that we've hit the view set and uh, our URLs and our view have been configured correctly. So that should be what we need to do for the view set for now. Hopefully that should work. But first I need to go to the URLs and pretty much make sure that it's correct. So I need to 
I need to do the URL slightly differently from how we've been doing in previous projects. So in previous in previous ones, we've actually defined the URLs here, but in Django REST framework, you tend to register an entire view set using what's called a router. So if I do router is equal to routers dot default router, so another REST framework thing, this is what we're going to use to register our view sets. So like the one that we've just defined, our test view set here. And if I go back to the URLs, I need to import that. So from REST framework, you can see on the left the server just broken because I've uh, saved um, saved the file, but I have I haven't finished it yet, so it's broken. And I'm going to do from REST framework import routers. So that should uh, make the server run again, so you can see it's running on on the left hand side there now. And I want to register the view set. So to register the view set, I first need to import the view set. So it's in content API, uh, views, test view set. So if we go back to the URLs, I'm going to do uh, from content API uh, dot views, I'm going to import test view set. So below here, I'm going to say router dot register, and I'm going to register the view set. So I'm actually going to delete this comment because it's just huge and obnoxious. Uh, but the to register the router, so I, I want to register this view set uh, with the default router. So I'm going to, in here, I'm going to put a string. And this is going to be sort of how I want to refer to the, to the, to the URL itself or the set of views that we're defining. And in this case, I'm just going to say test and the so the second argument here is going to be test view set. Okay, so that should be registered, and now what we should need to do is we need to uh, import include, so a thing called include to import other URLs, and I'm going to register the router URLs. So to do that, I'm just going to do a URL, and this URL is just going to be a more generic URL. This is like the top level URL, so I'm going to say it's just going to start with API. So all our APIs are going to be uh, whatever our domain is, forward slash API, forward slash, in this case, test. So it's going to say API, and I'm going to include router.urls. So that should give it access to all the URLs dictated by uh, this router, which we've defined and configured here, uh, or instantiated and configured, I should say. And I've also missed a comma off the end there, so I'm going to add that. And so now let's have a test. So let's, oh, we've got an error here, I think. So base name is not specified. Do we need to specify base name? So we could, we may need to specify base name here. Let's just say that's equal to test. Is that going to make it happy? I'm just trying to restart the server just to make sure. And so that does satisfy the requirement. So we just needed to add a little base name there as well. Just a name with which we can refer to the view set effectively. So on refresh, we get this page at 404 because we're not at the URL that we've configured. So in this, we we can see we, we've got uh, API here. So if I go to forward slash API and I go to, this would be, be in this case, test. So that's not defined. I think the issue here, I need a trailing slash there. I think that's probably causing an issue there because otherwise it'd be looking for API test, not API forward slash test. So if I refresh, okay, so now we get the response from the view set. So that means the URL has been registered. So all the URLs that are configured by this router are included in this main URLs file here. And then the router, we have to register the view set with the router. So that's how we register a view set, which is defined in a separate app. In the next one, I think we're going to uh, add a model to this so that we can have that full CRUD functionality just given to us by the Django REST framework. Uh, so we can pretty much use our forms given, it, given to us in the Django REST framework as a sort of CMS so that we're able to easily add content and, and sort of publish it using using the interface here and then we are just going to display it on the actual front end, whatever that might be.